Welcome back to my channel guys. In today's video, I am going to be going 24 hours without my phone. I'll show you actually because I put my phone in my drawer and I'm not going to be there. I am not going to be able to be allowed to go on it today. First of all, I wanted to do this just as like a fun challenge to see how I would react without my phone for 24 hours because I know some people have went like 30 days without having a phone and that's just like crazy. I don't think I could do that honestly. And also I feel like I've been spending way too much time on my phone like on Instagram. I'll just go on there and like scroll through the same pictures and I'm like this is ridiculous. What am I doing? And that was the whole point of giving social media up for Lent. If you have not seen that video I will link it down below. It did work for a couple months and then I'm just falling back into the trap again. So we are going to work on that. Another thing that works out perfectly today is because I actually planned to fast for the Lord today. Instead of spending time cooking meals, I will be spending time with the Lord, which works out perfectly because then I won't have the distraction of being on my phone and I can just focus solely on him. I was planning on filming the 24 hour without my phone on Thursday. It's Wednesday today and then filming, well not filming, I wasn't going to film me fasting, but on Friday I was planning on fasting, but um, I am planned to work on those days, so it just wasn't going to work out. So it just works out perfectly that I'm doing both of these things today. It's currently 10.50, and usually I don't eat my first meal until like 11.30, 12 o'clock. Um, so I've been doing that for a while. Like, I've been just like reading my Bible, and that's how I like kind of not eat breakfast because I'm kind of like absorbed in like reading scripture and stuff. We'll see how I do after that first meal that I'm not going to be eating. I need to stay hydrated though because if I don't stay hydrated then I'm literally going to crash. But I'm excited to see how I act like without food. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm going to be really grouchy and I feel like that's going to be a sign for me to be like, Jessica, you need to deal with this right now. So that's the plan. I haven't done much this morning, just got ready. Um, I'm not dressed yet, I'm still in my PJs. I'm going to read my Bible and then I'll get back to you guys soon. It is now 12.30 and I just finished reading the Bible and then I got dressed, I put on this dress. I think it's really, really cute. So I was reading through Genesis around like 34 to like 36. I read like five chapters, I believe. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys, like, my notes. I love, like, when I'm able to, like, write something down when I'm reading the Bible. So recently, since Genesis is all about, like, timelines and, like, Abraham and Isaac, I have been writing all of their family lines because if I was just reading the family lines, I would not get anything out of it, but... I like to write all of them down, all of their children. Obviously, that's what a family tree is. So today, I was working on Eshaw's family line. I think that's how you say his name, um, Jacob's brother. And so that was in chapter 36. So this is, like, what it looks like. And then you have Sarah and, like, the rulers of Eden. This is Adam and Eve's. And then on the back, I have the family line of Noah's sons. So I think that that's pretty interesting. And I just like looking at all of this and I think it's so important to read Genesis and really write everything down because Genesis is so important because this is literally our family. Like Adam and Eve and their descendants, they are related to us because Adam and Eve were the first people on earth. Everyone is related to them in some way. I might not be related to like, Eshaw's great-grandson. Another thing, every morning I sit with God and just like let him tell me what he wants me to do. So I just like sit in silence and I go away from my busy day and I just take some time with him and usually I like set a timer on my phone for like 10 minutes or whatever so that I can like know when my time is up. But today I did not have a timer so I just kind of like chilled out and just kind of waited until I thought that God told me everything that he wanted me to do today. 
Um, and this is what he told me. Let me go to it. Today, he told me to stop listening to music and watching videos that have cussing in it. Um, so the reason that I felt that he was telling me this is because I had a song stuck in my head. I don't even know where the song came from. It was like, the song was like, I'ma get lazy and that has like cussing in it and that was like stuck in my head and so I started singing Lord I Need You instead so that that song would be stuck in my head. I think that was just a sign from him that like I need to stop listening to that stuff because that is something that I've really been struggling with because there's so many songs that I really like that have cussing in it but I know that I'm not going to be any better if I'm listening to those songs. So that is something that I need to work on. And then so I wrote Lord I Need You here as well because that is the song that kept popping in my head. He told me to restrain from irritability while fasting. This is my first time ever fasting. I've never done this before so I really do not know how it's going to go, but I trust that with God's power, he will allow me to overcome anything that I'm feeling. And I feel like being hangry is something that usually I deal with when I don't eat. So, so far I haven't been like irritable or anything. Um, I'm also by myself. Usually my irritation increases when I'm around my parents. I don't know why, just like Sometimes they agitate me and th they do it because they know that I don't like it and that I it annoys me. So that's why I get irritable around them, but I'm really going to try to not do that. That's another thing that I'm really working on. Um, one thing that I really wanted to work on in 2020 was just obeying my parents and not arguing back or making up excuses that I had something better to do or that I didn't have time to do something and just do it instead of just arguing with them. That has been wonderful. Like seriously, it's just so much easier and there's no arguing because your parents are gonna make you do it either way. So just like do it. But a thing that I am struggling with is talking back to my parents, not really arguing about doing anything, but like I have an attitude with my parents that I really need to work on because I really wanna be respectful to them and I want to make sure that I'm treating them as they are my parents. I might read a little bit more of the Bible later, but I'm not sure. I kind of stop usually when I feel like I'm like zoning out or getting distracted by things because then I'm not really focusing on the Bible and then like I get distracted and it's just not good. So that is why I stopped. But if I refocus myself, I might go back to doing that a little bit later. But a couple things that I wrote down for today, since I do not have my phone, I usually have a to-do list on my phone. Some things that I am thinking of doing today is painting and I don't know what I'm going to paint yet because usually I get my inspiration from Pinterest, but obviously I don't have my phone. So I'm thinking I'm actually going to church tomorrow for my grandmother's friend's mother's funeral. I'm thinking of wearing this blue dress that I really like and I haven't worn it in a while, so I think that's going to be nice. Um, and then I, my nails do not look that great right now so i'm planning on painting them blue like the same color as the dress and then i might draw like little crosses on my nails i will see you guys when i have my next update i did a little bit of laundry for my mom and then i put some stuff away and then i colored for like an hour and i'll show you guys those things in a little bit i love my tapestry it's so pretty i'm just like looking in the background and it's just like so pretty with fasting I, my stomach was grumbling a little bit around like one o'clock, um, but now like I don't feel hungry at all. I do feel like my energy is not as high as it usually is. I do also feel more thirsty. I don't know why, but I've drank like three cups of water today. I do feel more bored now that I don't have my phone, especially with like this fasting and spending time with God. Not that like Spending time with God is boring, that's not what I'm saying. But like when I was coloring, I could have been listening to like worship music or a Christian podcast or something, but I was just kind of like sitting in my silence, which can be good sometimes, but I feel like I do that so much that it's just like how much thinking can you do in a day? I did actually sing a couple worship songs. I sung the songs like What a Beautiful Name It Is, 
I don't really know the name of that song, but it's like something around that line. And then I sung Lord I Need You and I just kept like repeating the chorus of those two songs while I was col coloring, but eventually like singing the same songs is going to get old. I want to show you my pictures that I drew. I didn't draw them, but I colored them, so it's pretty much the same thing. So the first one that I colored was actually one that I hadn't finished, so I started coloring it and then I never finished it. So that is this one. It's just some hot air balloons. And then the rest of them, I did two more, and I wanted them to kind of have, like, a backstory about, like, Jesus. This one is the second one that I drew. And if you can see the wine cups in there, and then there's, like, wine cups all around the picture. So, I wanted to make the cottage, like, really cute. And the wine is, like, the life and the blood of Christ. And then the last one that I did is my favorite, and I was really, really inspired by this one. It's just beautiful. It's beautifully drawn and like, I don't know, there's something about this. I could literally frame this and put it on my wall and be happy. So this is the next one. It's a sun and a moon. And the reason that I love this one so much is because the moon just looks like so content and comforted, but then the sun looks very unhappy and like empty. And, like, it looks like she's kind of, like, keeping it a secret from the way that it's, like, drawn. And so I kind of added, like, a blue line underneath of her eye to, like, I don't know if you can see it. But there's a blue line under her eye. And I kind of made that look like she was, like, crying or, like, tears were, like, coming out of her eyes. And, like, just the color contrast that I used in this one and the way that everything fits together... Um, it kind of remind it just inspires me so much, not just because, like, of the sun and the moon and how, like, typical that is for a teenage girl to be, like, drawing that, um, but this image just, like, really is powerful in a way that people can actually, like, connect to it, and when I first saw this, I actually thought, like, she is in an unhappy marriage, like, that's the first thing that I saw because... I pictured like the moon being the husband and then the sun being the wife. The moon is comforted and stable in his relationship. He doesn't think that anything's wrong even though he is the cause of the problem. And the sun is unhappy. She doesn't know how to fix it. She's just kind of behind those closed doors and doesn't know what to do with herself. That was a really long story for a picture, but that's just kind of like where my mind went when I was like drawing this and I love I don't know the colors are just so pretty I think it's very powerful and creative she's just like so beautiful even though she looks so sad and so unhappy she's beautiful I think the next thing that I'm going to do is probably read I have a book called January 1st that I'm reading right now, and it's about a girl with schizophrenia. It's pretty good so far, so I think I'm going to dive into that a little bit more, kind of just relax. Another thing that I've noticed with not having my phone is time goes by really slow. I don't know if that's just because, like, I don't have the distraction of being on my phone, and when I'm on my phone, I'm, like, doing things, and it takes up time or something else, but yeah, time is running really slow. When I was coloring, I thought it was going to be like three o'clock by the time I was done, but it's it's only 2.12 right now. So I just cried for like an hour, and an hour to like two hours, and I'm gonna tell you why. I was reading my book. I was reading this book, January 1st. The thought literally came to me. Let me watch a movie, because I can watch a spiritual movie and that is like spending time with God, learning more about him. And I'm also not going to be on my phone. So I was like, okay, cool. This is going to be perfect. So I put in Heaven is for Real. I've read the book. I've seen the movie. It's like amazing. And I cried throughout the whole, the whole entire movie because I am just so overwhelmed by the love of God. God sent his only son to die on the cross for everything that we've done. Before we even commit a sin, God already knows and he's already forgiven us even though we haven't even done it yet. He took that sin and he threw it away because 
You are his child and he loves you so much. His love is just unconditional. It's that love that fills you. I've experienced his love. It's real. And the fact that the, like Colton, the kid from the movie Heaven is for Real, he went to heaven. He saw Jesus. And the way he just describes heaven is just like so amazing. And like how they came together to like pray over Colton. And he has conquered the world. This world that we live in, this is not our home. Our home is heaven. God gives us the opportunity. He gave, He gives us so many chances to love him and to accept his call. And that's why some people say, well, why can't God control bad things? God gives you the chance to be good. And it's your choice whether you accept him or if you reject him. And it's not too late. If you have made mistakes, girl, I've made so many mistakes. But God forgives you for that. It's you. It's not your last chance. You need to take the chance that God gives you and conquer it. Because that will give you eternal happiness and eternal life with Jesus. And a really big part in this movie that really hit me was the fact that the pastor, which is Colton's dad, was sitting in um, like, a graveyard, and he was, like, worshiping. He was putting flowers next to his friend's son's grave, which passed away, and then she came and sat next to him, and she didn't know that he was going to be there. She was like, I really did not want to believe you, and everything that Colton is saying, like, it just doesn't seem rational, and please watch this movie, it, or read the book, either one, they're both amazing, but she was saying, like, I was lacking faith and I was upset with God because I didn't understand why he would take my son but save your son. Todd, which is Colton's dad, asked her, do you think I love my son more than you love your son? And she said, no. He was like, do you think God loves my son more than he loves your son? And that's just so powerful because God loves everyone for who they are. He made us uniquely and perfectly in our mother's womb. He loves us because he created us. He is the creator of the universe. The creator of the universe wants a relationship with you. The creator of the universe created the flowers and the trees and the sunsets and the clouds and the oceans and the beautiful animals and everything that we have on earth. And he also created you. He knows how beautiful you are because he created you. He knows how special you are. That's why it also upsets me when people degrade their self, themselves or they say like, I'm not good enough or they say, I don't like the way that I look. I don't like the way that my hair looks. I don't like that I have acne all over my face. I don't like that I have fat on my stomach. God created you just the way you are. When you tell yourself that you are not good enough how do you think he feels he made you and you're disappointed by how you look i heard this analogy from somewhere else but i'm going to repeat it here because it's just so important a painter works on this beautiful painting and he spends months on it Nine months, actually. He spends nine months on this painting, and he was like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect painting. I made this one totally unique from all my other paintings. And then he goes to another place, and he sees another painting, and he's like, why can I, why am I not good enough? That painting looks better than me, than my painting. The painter is God. He created you. And when you go and you say, you compare yourself to other people, why don't I look like that? Why don't I act like that? Why is my hair not as blonde as hers? Whatever it is. How do you think God feels when he created you perfectly in his image and you are disgracing yourself? That is what happens when you trust God with your whole heart. You feel overwhelmed by him and you know how much he loves you. And... You just accept who you are. And it's going to take some time. You're not just going to poof like that. Be the best person that ever worshipped God. Or be totally in love with yourself. It is a process. It is 
something that comes with growing closer in your relationship with God, it is worth it. God is great. God is love. God is everything. God is joy. He loves you. I know you guys hear it all the time. God loves you, blah, blah, blah. But like, what does that mean? Accept that he loves you. Accept his call. Live your life for him. Because he is working hard every day to make sure that you are loved and that you have a wonderful life. And even though it might not seem like you always have a good life or that you go through hardships or whatever the case God is always with you. He is always comforting you. And the reason that he makes you go through those difficult situations is it so you can learn from them and grow from them and become a better person. When you ask God for patience, he doesn't automatically give you patience. He gives you opportunities to become more patient. Through my relationship with God, that is what I have learned. And I will never stop preaching it. I don't care if anyone is going to judge me because God never told us that it was going to be easy. He told us preaching his word and loving him was going to be hard. I am perfectly fine with dealing with hardship if that means eternal life with the creator of me and everything else and everyone else. I will catch up with you guys later. Little update for you guys. Um, I made dinner for my parents. I made them spaghetti and it was very tempting to eat it. Not like too tempting where I would like actually eat it. But yeah, I made myself some extra so that I can eat it as a leftover tomorrow. So pretty excited about that because it smelled really good. But while they were eating, I just sat and like drank my water. At first when I told my mom I was fasting because she like doesn't know anything about fasting. And she thought I was fasting because I thought I was too fat, which is not why I was fasting. I was fasting for God. There's a difference between fasting and starving yourself, and I'm fasting, not starving myself. But yeah, she was like, no, you have to eat. And I was like, um, no, I'm doing this for God. And she was like, okay, fine, but whatever. And then my dad was like, okay, that's so unhealthy. Like, doctors will definitely tell you that fasting is not good. And I'm like, actually, fasting is really good for you. It gives your body time to clean out your, like blood vessels I'm pretty sure I'm not really sure but I watched a video about fasting and I will leave it in the description so that you guys can go watch it because it was very very informative it is seven o'clock now and I have to dance in like literally a minute so I will give you guys another update soon so I just had dance and I wanted to update you guys a little bit so I did not feel like lightheaded or anything I thought that like since I'm not eating if I'm doing physical activity then I will feel like lightheaded um it wasn't like super extraneous exercise or anything we were just like tap dancing um and I hit my toe with the tap shoe and oh my gosh that hurts so much like my toe still hurts I really do want to go on my phone. Obviously, I'm not going to, but, like, I really want to. Something else. I have to set this clock in order to wake up on time tomorrow, which is going to be very exciting. And also, tonight, I won't have my meditation music. I like to wind down and listen to some nice calming music. I honestly feel like I've been eating all day. I did drink 10 glasses of water today, which is probably why I feel full, because... I have like water in my system, but yeah, there were a couple times where my stomach was like grumbling and stuff, but other than that, I feel like perfectly fine. My mood is actually better than when I eat food. I don't know, like my attitude is a lot better now than it is when I eat food. Like I did not argue with my parents once today. I'm going to go remove this nail polish, shower, and then paint my nails and then I'll probably go to bed on time tonight because I don't have my phone keeping me up. For the last like week I've been staying up on my phone until like 12 in the morning. That is very unhealthy and I definitely have been not getting as much sleep because I always wake up at 8 o'clock. I never don't wake up at 8 o'clock. That's like my time that I get up no matter if I go to bed late or not. It's 10 o'clock and I'm going to bed, which is crazy. Painted my nails kind of relaxing. I got to just like sit in silence, which was nice. Good morning guys, it's the next day and I wanted to give you guys a little update. I just woke up, so that's why I look like this. I had the worst night's sleep of my life last night. 
and I don't know if it's because I usually go to bed at like 12 or that I've been like going to bed at 12 or that I haven't eaten or anything um but like I woke up literally every hour it took me two hours to fall asleep I went to bed at 10 30 I did like my whole night routine and like meditation and stretching and stuff and then I tried falling asleep could not get comfortable and then at 12 o'clock I finally dozed off and then I woke up every single hour I woke up at 1 like 15 and I was like why is this happening to me like maybe I did not need sleep last night or something but I don't know what the case was I feel sick to my stomach right now it's probably because I haven't eaten anything but I kind of feel like I'm gonna throw up I literally woke up from like the smallest things like my dad this morning when he was getting ready for work he was like sniffling his nose and I woke up from that I was like what is happening to me and my heart is like beating super fast I have seven text messages I feel really cool that's more than normal actually my alarm this morning was surprisingly not annoying I thought it was going to be really annoying but it wasn't, thank the lord. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me going 24 hours without my phone and also fasting at the same time and spending my day with the lord. It was definitely worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.